Hey everybody, it's John. Hi, I'm Avery. And we're here to talk to you about our latest endeavor, <laughs> bees. So we're keeping bees now, just a very exciting adventure. And John, do you wanna give everyone like a little kind of history lesson over the last few years in our journey on keeping sure. bees? It's 2021. Okay. And I went to Man Lake and bought the premium hive kit with the suit smoker which is right here and um, got a hive uh, ended up buying some bees from a, a friend of mine pretty late in the season mm -hmm. and we set them up on the side of the barn and for a couple weeks everything looked really good but i was really new into the whole beekeeping thing in general and i didn't realize it but we must have killed the queen in the process of moving her from the nuke box over to the hive. And the, the colony just slowly dwindled away. And by the time I realized that something was going on, it was too late into the season to get another queen. And so essentially the hive just collapsed that first year. And I left it, I left it there to kind of degrade over the summer. And, and into the winter and when I took it apart you know it had been completely infiltrated with small hive beetles wax moths and other bugs so year one was 2021 and how much honey was harvested in year 2021 there was zero honey okay 2022 what happened 2022 decided that I was going to order a nuke of bees of uh, different type of bees of russian bees from man lake and ordered those over the winter as soon as they went on sale i was very excited i think i ordered them in january <laughs> and those were available for pickup in april which was uh here in indiana that's when things are really starting to kind of just show signs of of, of life um, in the springtime so i went down and i picked them up and installed them into the hive that I had since cleaned up completely from from the wax moth and, and the other damage that, that had happened. And I set them up and um, I quickly started understanding from people that I should I should get a second hive. <laughs> you got to have two. If you have one, you got to have two. Yeah, you so have to have two to be able to <laughs> compare the two to each other. And so without us talking about it too much. <laughs> I ordered a second nuke. I remember this. From somebody else that was more local, just about a half hour from from here. We're southern Indiana. We're southern Indiana. Yeah. And and in May that nuke was was available for pickup and that that uh, hive was specific to the VSH. It had the VSH trait which I was interested in trying to have bees that didn't need so much support mm -hmm. from treatments for Varroa mite. So I got them in May and, and then I was quickly able to watch and compare the two colonies grow up uh, over the course of the summer. And in fact, I got to the point that they filled out two deep boxes, both of them did, and one of them was ready for a honey super and uh, I actually added a, a couple honey supers on one and they started to draw comb out in that and they started to fill it up with nectar. And I thought, this is the year. I'm gonna get some honey this year. And so I left it on there and I left it on there. And then it was just over the course of about two weeks, they had either consumed the honey or moved it back down. And, and, and it was to the point that it was not, there was not enough there to even think about harvesting any honey so, so the recap 2022 how so, many pounds were <laughs> so 20 so 2022 um ended up taking the honey supers off with zero honey produced. zero that's year two that's year two and so tell us about 2023 what's happened so far this year so 2023 i eagerly was waiting and watching the hives in the winter time and they were both they were both making it 
which was, was really surprising to me because one of the hives was really light on food stores going into winter. And I thought for sure that they would just end up collapsing over the winter. But uh, I stayed fairly diligent on keeping the uh, candy board on top of the hive to help with moisture content. And lo and behold, they both made it through the winter. Very happy. So it was at that point I decided that I'd really like to get some more hives. And as I tried to convince my, my loving wife here, <laughs> you really need more than two hives because the average loss every year is about 40%. So if we lost half the hives every year and I only had two, there's a good chance that we're not going to make enough honey. So that's <laughs> And when, it worked. <laughs> so that's when that's we logical. said, hey, let's try to bump this up to four hives. So I bought some equipment, painted it up, got it prepped, ready to go before the, the big growth season set in. And I quickly went up to four. Then there was a need to split a hive. Then I went up to five. Then I ordered another purebred Russian queen. It's coming in later the in the month, and uh, we're going to be up to six. And that's kind of really our target mm -hmm. this year is to, to end up going into the season with six hives. Um, we will, speaking of honey production this year. <laughs> like, tell me about your honey. <laughs> we will, as you can see back here, the hive there in the background uh, on your far right, that's got three medium boxes of honey that should be available for harvest here probably in a couple weeks. I have no idea how much honey that's actually going to yield, but we're excited. Awesome. So, so today so we have five hives and no honey. We have five harvested. Hives, no honey. Plans to go to six, and we also have plans to maybe sell a little bit of honey. Yes. Want to tell us about that? Yes. So I've been working on the labeling, which not an expert, um, but definitely will give more details on that. Of you know, how do you market a product and package it in a way that people want to buy it and it looks aesthetically pleasing? So that's been quite the adventure. A lot of iterations. Lots of iterations of trying things out. And so we're excited to, to see that come to fruition soon and to fill it with beautiful honey. So we've had many people, friends and family and kind people ask us about our honey and our bee adventures. And one question that I get asked um, specifically for you is why, why keep bees? Why, why do this? Well, I've always had a love for agriculture. And yep. uh, I remember as a child, helping my great uncle do some farming things, primarily just doing disking for him. Um, and I've always wanted to do something in the agricultural mm -hmm. area. When people find out that you keep bees, what's their initial reaction? Every single person, I think, that I've told that I keep bees, they say, I would love to buy some honey off of you, but I want nothing to do with the bees. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I like it. When it comes to keeping bees, what's your favorite part? My favorite part is growing the bees and growing the honey. Yeah. You know, making small tweaks along the way to try to help the bees out, but really letting the bees do what they need to do is what is what I've enjoyed the most about it. Yeah. So what's next for us is a great question that's kind of evolved and morphed over this last two years from we're just going to have one hive we're just going to have two hives we're just going to have four hives and now that we see that this area is supportive to making uh, surplus honey mm -hmm. we're we're starting to dabble in the idea of maybe this might be some nice supplemental income from a honey sales perspective here mm -hmm. for for local people so what do you see us doing in the next several years? Yeah, so I mean, after all of our discussions and running out some numbers, our goal is 60 hives in five years. Yeah. So growing this, having hives at other locations, it's become an enjoyable pastime in different aspects for you and I. We play different roles um, in making this successful, but 60 and five, that's our goal. That's the goal. So as far as other things, you know, we've got a whole list of things we want to share with you all. Um, and so I know one of them is us going through our label 
creation process. I think that's been a quite a journey that I'd like to share with everyone. Um, we enjoy personal finance. And so wanting to share how much money have we put into this? How much money have we made? Like just being really transparent because that influenced our decision to try to go after 60 hives in five years. So that's another topic we'd love to share about. I know you've got more of the technical um, bee related, specifically bee related videos, thoughts that come to mind for you. What's next content wise? Um, I think the, the biggest thing is, like you said, going over the cost of expanding these and, and maybe a little bit of the, the thought process on, on how to split, when to split and uh, things like that. Who knows, you know, we're, we're thinking about selling honey, but we might also sell a little bit of bee byproducts like propolis or pollen. Um, so with that, thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Uh, we're excited to share about our adventure and our journey going forward. Um, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Have a good day. about <laughs> sure yeah. i just got stung in the face not that long ago okay the bees are just going wild on that clover there that'd be some good footage this is working good isn't it <laughs> we can enjoy our yard we can enjoy our yard again